All right, so I've got my rib cut out. I used an angle grinder with a cutting disc. I made sure to take care of those sharp corners with the file. You can do so very lightly with the grinder as well. I'm just gonna place it up against the other two pieces to make sure that my fit up is uh, looking good. I've got a little bit of a gap at both ends, but it's not much. I feel pretty comfortable. I can hit this with some TIG welding and still come out on top. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do before welding all the pieces together is clean up uh, all the rust and mill scale on all three areas on the front and on the back side. So you can do that with a wire wheel, a sanding disc, a grinding disc, a flapper wheel, many different ways to do it, but you wanna grind it down to shiny metal before you get to welding. All right, so here I've got my pieces. You can see that they're rusty to begin with. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. What I've put on the grinder is what's called a flap disc. It's basically a beefed up version of a sanding disc, uh, but they both achieve the same goal as polishing the material. You can also use a wire cup or a wire wheel that will attach to an angle grinder. Here I'm going to demonstrate how to change out the discs. You're going to need this special tool and you can see how it kind of fits into the arbor insert. Now this black button that I'm pushing, if you push that and rotate the wheel into a correct position, it's going to lock it in place. You're not going to be able to move it around. And then you can go ahead and use the tool to loosen up that arbor insert. And once you loosen it up, you can go ahead and unscrew it. You can remove the disc and then you can place uh, whatever media that you want to use on the material. You can add a grinding disc, you can add a sanding disc. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna demonstrate wire wheels don't actually need the arbor insert. You can just screw those straight on. Now here I'm using a flat disc to go ahead and polish all of my pieces, grind through that rust, and then give it a nice little uh, sheen. Uh, you don't have to polish your pieces at this point. Just make sure that you clean the areas where you're going to be welding, at least an inch uh, on either side. I'm polishing my pieces right now because it's going to take a lot of work out of the process later on when you have to clean up the entire piece. So just as long as you clean up the areas that are going to be welded, you can go ahead and save the polishing for later. Here you can see that all my pieces have been cleaned up. I even have the foot piece uh, cleaned up, that flat bar that's going to be welded to one of the sides of our square. And as you can see, even just uh, if you were to just grind the areas that are going to be welded, uh, you're going to basically be removing the lines uh, that we use to lay out our pieces. So always make sure that you have something to measure with. That way you can verify uh, your fit up before welding it. Because if you weld it before you get your fit up right, you're going to end up having to break it apart and doing it all over again. Now here I'm using gas tungsten arc welding or TIG welding to tack weld my parts. You don't have to use TIG if you don't want to. You can use whichever welding process you prefer, uh, but I use it because the welds uh, look a lot cleaner um, and I can control the heat input so as to you know limit distortion. Now after tack welding or in between welding passes in general, you should check the dimensions of your piece, check for squareness, make sure the fit up is correct. Here I've got a little bit of wiggle in my two pieces so it's not completely square and that means I have to either hammer this out or break my welds and re-tack it together correctly uh, because if I were to keep working, I would have a finished product that is unusable because it's out of square. Now after I've taken care of that distortion, I can go ahead, flip it over, and then tack weld the opposite side. And again, after I've placed the tack welds on the opposite side, I'm going to again check the dimensions, make sure that there's no distortion, make sure my parts are still within square. And if I check the outside, everything looks good. Um, it, the pieces are square, but if I check the inside, you'll notice that the square does not uh, sit flat against both legs. Uh, that is because my inside tack uh, went over the edge a little bit, so there is a little bit of weld material that's preventing me from getting an accurate reading. Uh, what I can do later on is go in with the file 
uh, and kind of touch that up. And once everything looks good, I can go ahead and set my ribbon there and make sure that I've got the proper fit up before I start tack welding that. And of course, do a couple more checks after you've tack welded the ribbon there. Uh, check for squareness. I flip it over, you see that I've tacked the opposite side. And now all I need to do is clean up those tack welds and I can weld it all up. Always remember to brush whatever you're, you're gonna be welding on so that way you can remove any impurities. A lot of times I see students weld on top of dirty material and it just doesn't work out. So please remember to brush. Okay, so here I went ahead and I used GTAW to weld all three pieces on the front and on the back side, remembering to check squareness in between uh, all my welds. And so what I'm going to do now is head back to the grinders, grind and polish this up front and back. Right here, I'm just grinding down my welds. So grinding down the welds is crucial for the final finished look of the product. You don't want to be able to see any welds or as little of the weld as possible. With this tool or with this project in particular, you want all the pieces to look like they combine into one seamless tool. So we want to get rid of much of the weld as we can. And by that, I just mean its appearance. We really shouldn't be grinding down too far into the material to get rid of the weld. Just enough to make sure that all the pieces are flush with each other. Now, depending on the welding process that you used, you might have a little bit of work to do. Depending on your variables, you can either just grind it and polish it, no problem. And that also depends on your technique. If you're not running too high of amps or volts, then maybe there's not a whole lot to get rid of. And just the same where if you're running too cold of a weld, you know, you might have some issues with that. So weld quality and the control we have over our technique comes into play here. So you wanna be able to just grind the weld till everything is flush. And in here, I also switch to a different grinder that I have attached a flap disc to just to kind of make it easier on myself, uh, not have to spend the time on switching the discs out. And then once I've done uh, grinding all the welds front and back, I go ahead and I start polishing it because the grinding disc leaves some pretty visible um, grain cuts into the surface of the material. So while it does appear to be, you know, shiny metal and a cleaned up surface, it's still kind of rough cut. And we want to get rid of all of that by using a sanding disc or a flat disc to polish up the surface. So this is where we can't get too carried away with our grinding, because if we grind a little bit too much, it's gonna be harder to polish it. All right, and for this last piece, the foot of the speed square, I'm gonna leave this one up to you. Let me see some of your creativity. Start thinking outside the box, how you're gonna attach this to the speed square. Now it needs to be centered on one of those legs. And in this area that I'm gonna be showing you with the ruler, that needs to be able to sit against pieces of material to get accurate measurements. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of welding in that area, you need to be able to grind it down or at least file it down. All right, so let me see what you can do with this project.